Surrounding areas, you have tuned in to the Free Range Human Show of Choice. Your daily dose of reality radio starts now. This is the Clay Edwards Show. I am, of course, Clay Edwards, and we are live here at the Cotton Exchange Plaza in the 103.9 WYAB studios. And if you would like to call in to today's show, we're going to be discussing mental health. It's Mental Health Awareness Month, and I am joined by Miss Chris, Miss Christiane Williams. With leading by example, and Christiane was in the studio with me and Therese and Nick Fulton with USA Pawn a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, if that's that long ago. And I and I love getting to talk to people more one on one. I like the group conversations and all of that stuff. But I, Miss Christiane, left a really nice comment on one of my Facebook posts, and I said, "Would you like to come back on the show, just me and you, and chop it up one day?" And she said, "Absolutely." So I said. Well, come on back. So here we are today. I've got Miss Christiane here with me. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, Clay. I'm doing fine. It's seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it is. Oh, real quick, I, I I got distracted there. If you guys if you guys want to call in and, and look, let's try to stay on topic this morning. If you call in, um, if you want to discuss mental health in, in any capacity, feel free. The Mack Hike Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Flowood phone line is six zero one eight seven nine zero 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 two. And the text line is 769-241-1944. And look, I, I welcome any uh, respectful comments or questions this morning. Would love to hear from you guys, as I'm sure Christiane would as well. All right, so back to you. I apologize. Oh, no problem. Uh, thank you for getting up and coming out here. And since our last interview here or conversation, you've been a busy woman. I mean, I, I pride myself in getting around all these social <laughs> events. I had to tap out every now and then. I I saw I see you popping up on Facebook. You were at Top Cop yesterday. You've been at Grip to Grip and Grin. Have you been out to the Rankin County Republican breakfast yet? No, I have not. We got to get you out there first Saturday of next month at McLean's. Okay, <laughs> okay. And uh, they they had the suicide prevention folks there last month. Okay, and that's what really got my wheels to turning about this because I I don't think anybody will argue that if somebody gets to that point of of cons- contemplating suicide. There may be some mental health stuff there that we need to address. Absolutely. And did you know that Mississippi is the number one state for, uh, for suicide rates? I knew our numbers was up. Um, I know 2020, we had 410. 2021, we have not. And I'm saying we have not because I'm on the suicide prevention uh, statewide uh, task force. Uh, the numbers are not in, but they are high. Um much higher than we would want them to be. You know, one is one too many. Uh, absolutely. You know, but I, I guess you just you figure stuff's going to happen. But to, to to be number one, I mean, we're we're always last in everything, and we're always first in the bad things. It's like most obese, suicide. Like, come on, man, can we get a break? Right, uh, and that's why I, my feet has been on the ground, trying to promote and try to just get people to talk about. You know, your feelings are valid. Um, one of the things I tell people all the time, don't suppress your feelings. Be able to, you know, express them, but express them with non-judgmental people. Uh, make sure you get your circle together so um, you can go and, you know, help is available. You're not alone. Um, like I posted the other day, it's something wrong with all of us. All of us got issues. It's just how do we deal with them? I um, talk to myself a lot. <laughs> yes, well, I've, I've done that too. Out loud, <laughs> quietly. You know yeah. I mean, I, I I try to I try to look in the mirror a lot, and I, I sometimes I joke around. I say like, this this show, as much as it is anything, I could call it the reeducation of Clay Edwards, right? Because I, I go into it with this one mindset, but then I have someone great like yourself on, and I start reevaluating how I how I look at things because sometimes we live in our bubbles. And you, you you talked about when you were, uh, I want to say you were a rookie in law enforcement. And you right. Were, somebody referred to somebody that was picking at their skin as a, a meth head. And you were like, that's like the worst thing I've ever heard somebody call somebody. And I'm terrible about that. I will see somebody like meth head, junkie, crackhead. And it's just kind of a catch all for somebody that should be doing more with their life. Right. And I'm guilty. I had my pastor in here the other day, interviewed him. And I said, one of my weaknesses that I got to work on that I pray about is to have more sympathy for people in a bad situation, but gosh, it's hard sometimes. It's it's the human part of us, and we've been so acclimated to the stigma of putting people in categories by how they look and appear, and you just never know the underlying 
condition or the story behind why this person look like this, why these people act like this, um, what are they doing? <clears throat> One of the things that um, I do in my training, um, especially when I do for the African-American community, we talk about why we don't deal with mental health. Um, in an aspect that we should or now we are starting to talk about it uh, more openly, but it's still it's kind of climbing that wall, getting 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 that brick kind of moved back um, to just talk about our feelings. Because me personally, um, when we don't deal with it, it does has an adverse effect on us as a community. And then to me, that is some of the underlying crime. Um, that problems with crime problems that we were having, you know, that early intervention, if you know it, see it, do something about it, you know, knowing your resources in the community. And that's one of the things that I, I, you know, when I, you know, I'm just, when I do my own, I dive in deep um, to make sure that they understand. And even if my audience is not African-American, I want another race to understand because we got to understand each other in order to make things better. You know, so little just so everybody knows i i asked miss christiane was she comfortable with me having this conversation being a white guy talking about mental health in the black community because i mean look jackson is what 80 percent black or so and i that's where i grew up i it's what i experienced most of my life i would say 95 percent of my life in jackson and i see it every day and i think we may have touched on this last time you were here there's a lot of ptsd and, Absolutely. and growing up in a high crime, high, and I didn't grow up in in, in a bad neighborhood. So I, I was, though I grew up in South Jackson, I was right on the outskirts, you know, kind of pr- a safe area, you know. So I don't want to pretend I was out there, you know, in the worst parts of Jackson, <laughs> fighting it out, dodging bullets or nothing like that. It wasn't it wasn't like that. And I was blessed to grow up like that, but a lot of people weren't. And to grow, up, especially like a damn war zone, you know, you, you you're dodging bullets. Somebody you know is dying every day. I mean, a lot, it blows my mind, Christiane, how many times we look on the news and we see that one of these murder victims or murder suspects is 14 and 15 years old. That is a mental health issue to grow up and think that. I mean, it may not be the traditional, what we think of as quote unquote crazy. I mean, because unfortunately those are, those get mixed together. Right. And Absolutely. it's like people think mental health means other people think I'm crazy. And that's not it at all. And that's why I want to be so open to talk about these things on my show is I want to break that stigma of mental health and know that it's okay. And I'm digressing a little here, but uh, you, there's no way that what's going on in Jackson, some of it can be solved through s- some mental health help. Early intervention. There's the word uh, I'm looking for. PTSD is not just military. It's your environment that you grow up in, things that you're subjected to every day, all day, um, even working inside of a jail. You know, one of the things I will say for the late Sheriff McMillan, um, he was real um, conscious of, you know, how much, you know, if you get exposed to this every day, all day, you know, he might tell you, look, you know, you take your break, walk outside, you know, just clear your head. Um, because you you keep seeing these things over and over and witness it. Yes, it becomes a part of you, and you can have um, adverse effects from it. We don't want to become numb to it either. You're like, you no. don't you don't want to normalize it either. There's got to be a balance of understanding your purpose within that. And even the police officers need more mental health because you think about the things that they're seeing and encountering today that. I was where well, I've been in the 26 years as law enforcement. We didn't see as much as we're seeing um, those types of things. So they are they they need um, help, and that's one of the things when I talk to law enforcement about mental health. We talk about self care, and I tell people all the time it is okay to practice selfish self care. We need at least one of those days where it's just nothing. But about ourselves, selfish self care is important. You know, we just got a text here from a friend of ours, Kristen, that's a nurse and listens to the show every day. And she said, um, "I want to make sure I quote it properly here. Healthcare staff has PTSD as well. She goes, a, a lot of nurses have it, especially since COVID. And you know, we forget about that sometimes. I say we, I, Clay, doesn't always consider that um, the healthcare workers and what they've experienced with PTSD. Uh, you know, or if you're working a working a heck." We were going to talk about this later in the show, but I'll bring it up now. Could you imagine being a nurse in the in the uh, in a triage or the emergency okay. room, and and that poor baby comes in from what happened in Pearl, and having to see that? I mean, you don't just—it's like being in law enforcement. 
you, you don't you can't just cut that switch off. You cannot. You cannot. Um, the Nurses Association, actually, uh, Miss Ruth Ann with first responders, and we were connecting so um, to do some things with the Nurses Association regarding mental health awareness. So that is coming. Um, we do know that there's they need then an outlet. Um, I just couldn't imagine. Um, some of the things that they see, I know what I've seen and encountered is a law enforcement perspective, but they're seeing it on a whole different level. So we have a lot of people that's affected by the day-to-day things that one person does that cause mental anguish on somebody else. Yeah, look, uh, I think that we can just kind of lump, roll all that in and say our, our first responders, we need to be way more cognizant of what they deal with. Absolutely. And I know we just, uh, police week just ended, I believe. Or are we in the middle of it? We're in the middle of it. We're in the middle of it, yeah. Uh, I think it's a good time to, to acknowledge, and first responders in general, that, man, these guys, what they see, these guys and girls, it, it is it can be traumatic. You know, by, by 7 a.m., they could have done seen somebody deceased in a car accident, domestic violence dispute, uh, robbery, just any, any, any horrible thing. And we're just getting out of bed. And they right. still got the rest of their day ahead of them. And can't turn that switch off. Um, they, they, they constantly see it. And, you know, think about every time they walk in the door, what am I going to encounter today? You know, it's just that unknown fear. Sometimes they get the actual best of a person. Yeah, you know, as I've gotten older, and we got to take a break, but I want to say this real quick. As I've gotten older, I, I completely understand why when you have encounters with law enforcement, in the midst of their job, if you're getting pulled over or they're having to get onto you, basically, I understand their attitude a lot more now because, or why they're on edge more because you just see it. And you, as you get older, you tend to respect what they're having to go through. And you don't know what they've seen by the time they pulled you over for going 10 miles over the speed limit. They could have already seen all the things I just mentioned. And so you just try to be more cognizant of those things. And, and that is so true. Yesterday we had the um, privilege of hearing Brookhaven police chief that received um, the, I think it was the Jim Ingram award. And, you know, chief got up and had to explain or told and, you know, share it with us the day he got the call with two officers down and he and his captain went into the woods looking for um, his men and to find them. And they were unresponsive. And, you know, it was just, I, I had never had someone to actually explain how I find my cohort, you know, and, and this person has been killed well, they, in the they, line they, of they duty. Then you have to go tell their family. Absolutely. And, I mean, you could hear the anguish even – it's been, what, two, three years, I think, if I'm not – I think somewhere like that since those guys was killed in the line of duty. And to, and to hear him still talk about it, it's just like it was fresh on yesterday. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a break on that note. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show, joined by Christian Williams with Leading by Example. We're discussing mental health, mental health awareness month. If you want to call in, the Mack Hike Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Flowood phone line is 601-879-0002. If you prefer to text the show, 769-241-1944. We'll be right back after this break on 103.9 WYAB. America, you love your country, so it goes without saying that you also love your ride. And Auto Armor in Flowood wants to help you make that ride shine. Auto Armor in Flowood is Central Mississippi's premier automotive detail and ceramic coating shop. Servicing any type of vehicle, including ATVs, boats, and more. Need just a quick detail or paint correction? Auto Armor can make it happen. But if you're set to hit the road in a blaze of glory while flying the old red, white, and blue, Auto Armor should be your first and last call to give your ride a full service ceramic coating. Auto Armor is locally owned and operated by the loud and proud American patriot, Clay Edwards. Auto Armor also proudly backs the blue, all military and first responders. So don't forget to ask for your discount. Call 601-260-0858. 601-260-0858. Or stop in today, fellow Americans. Auto Armor is located at 4394 Mangum Drive in Flowood. Online at AutoArmorMS.com. Auto Armor, unapologetically American. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. We are live here at 103.9 WYAB. The segment's going to be brought to you by Complete Exteriors, Roofing and Gutters. Complete Exteriors, Roofing and Gutters in Pearl wants to help you determine who to use when seeking roof repair or work on your gutters. 
You need to choose a qualified, certified company that has a local brick and mortar building, a company that has been in business longer than two years and offers a warranty, complete exteriors, has a 4.9 Google review, and has been in business for over 16 years. Complete Exteriors Roofing and Gutters can provide you with a professional and honest look at your roof and gutters. Complete Exteriors, quality without compromise. Check them out online at completeexteriorsms.com. And uh, don't forget, they do have a Roof for Troops program. You get a $250 rebate on a new roofing system for all active military, veterans, and retirees. All right, in studio, I've got Miss Christiane Williams with Leading by Example, Mental Health Awareness, and uh, it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Christiane, one of the things we talked about last time you were here, and I, sh- I should have wrote it down, what is the, has the, when does the Mental Health Awareness 911 number go online? July of 2020, this yeah. July. Of 2022. 2022, 988, and it will be. That's going to be the number, number is 988? It's going to be 988, the mental health number to. 800 suicide line would go to 988. I like that. It's that's way overdue. It is. It is. And it's nationwide. Uh, mm-hmm. Mississippi have its own 988 uh, steering committee. Um, so we are trying to make sure that last week and the week last week they did, they had two sessions um, for the community and first responders. Cause the main thing we was on that committee um, and we even brought in people with diagnosed mental illness, if you call this number, what do you want? Even as a citizen, if you call that number um, 988, what are you expecting from the other end of that call? So it's going to be a mental health crisis line where whatever the mental illness is, you'll be directed um, to the person that you need to talk to. That's good stuff there. So it goes live like July 1st. Say, do we know the date? July the 16th. July, July 16th. 16th. It's the day it's supposed to launch. And then by September, it will be up and fully, you know, staffed. Because, you know, I guess in July, we're going to work out the kinks. <laughs> so um, so is it if somebody from Mississippi calls, does it patch through to a Mississippi Right, dispatcher? it'll be Mississippi. Right, it's going to be Mississippi. Department of Mental Health. Kind of how 911 works. It right. goes to the local. Yeah, the Department of Mental Health is engaged in this to make sure that the resources that they have is plugged right into the operator that's calling, that you're calling to. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so <clears throat> bouncing around a little bit here. Now that I had a couple of days to digest this, and you brought it up before I even had a chance to this morning, so we were 100% on the same page. The incident in Pearl with the with the lady killing her baby. Um, I think the uh, people probably saw the initial mug shots that came out and it, I, that she, she didn't look as distraught as you would expect somebody to look. Absolutely. But then you see the perp walk yesterday and the, and the current mug shot where she's got dark hair and she's clearly dealing with some stuff Absolutely. I, because let's be honest here. I don't care what anybody says. This may rub some people the wrong way. And I know they're charging with capital murder, and I don't know if the insanity is going to be a plea or any of that stuff. But to to do that to your child, there's obviously some mental health stuff going on. And me and you both nailed it, I believe, postpartum depression of some sort. Absolutely. Um, I had a child. He's 20 now. Uh, when I had my child and came home, I didn't realize what it was, but I started to kind of have some strange feelings um, so I actually talked to an older, uh, mother that kind of walked me through, um, some of the, some of the, what to do, what not to do, but I didn't go and seek, uh, mental health treatment. I did not, but, um, uh, postpartum depression, I've read it, um, being in the courtroom, uh, with my career job, I have actually seen cases from mothers that had, um, was in the middle of postpartum depression and it didn't hit me, Clay, that it was so real until I had to sit in a courtroom and listen to a full trial regarding um, postpartum. And I was like, this stuff is real. And that was about 20 years ago. Uh, I didn't realize it. Um, but looking at her yesterday, you know, I was at Top Cops when the thing came across the uh, news break. And when I looked at her, my friend beside me, Eva, Eva say, what's wrong? I guess she saw the look on my face. She thought it was a, uh, you know, real, a family issue that had hit me. And I said, it's something 
deeper with this young lady. I don't know the ins and outs. Like I say, I'm not prejudging anybody, but obviously it is something that was going on um, with this young lady. And to look at her yesterday, not what she did, but actually look at her as a human being, you know that there is some deep, deep issues there. Um, well, you hear stories, you know, about women who are dealing with severe postpartum depression, even thinking that their babies have, are the devil and right. stuff. And there's that case, I want to say it was in Texas a few years back, where the lady drowned like six of her babies in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. And this situation, the first thing I thought about was, I guarantee, this is in my mind, that she probably thought her child was something evil and it was trying to get her. I mean, because there's no rational, that's not something anybody clicking on all cylinders does. No. No, sir. You know, so there, there's clearly something there, and I'm not making any excuses for it. No matter what you're going through, there's no excuse to do that. So let me clear the air there real quick. But is there something you can do to prevent getting to that point when the signs are there? And that is reaching out to somebody with mental health stuff and reaching out to somebody like yourself. And reaching out, um, calling the 800 number, um, letting your physician know um, that you're having issues. Even when you take the baby in for a checkup, you know, you can really tell your pediatrician that you having problems. And I assure you, the pediatrician gonna assume, uh, gonna get you to the right people as the parent or the mother, you know, to make sure that you get the proper help. Let me ask this: Is there a system in place for kind of a see something, say something, where maybe the mother doesn't realize that she's? Because most people who are dealing with it, sometimes they don't because it's internal; they don't see it. If a family member or friend sees, is there a number they can call and say, hey, I think this person's dealing with something and may need some help? You can call the 800 suicide line now, and they will still reroute you. With the Department of Mental Health, you can go online, click on any um, your area uh, map, and it'll give you the resources. And then they all have mobile crisis units um, where you can call and just say, hey, I'm here. Um, my whatever, Christian, she's whatever to me. She's having these issues. Can you get somebody to come out here and check her? We got, all right, we got a call here on the Matt Kike Flowood phone line. Hey, caller, you're on the air. Hey, just got a question. I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy about it, but I know I think what you're doing is great. So let me get that out there first. But what I'm saying, trying to get at is what, it sounds a lot like this could be used weaponized, whereas like a friend of mine or a family member might be mad at me, call your line and say, hey, I, I think he's going to be harmful to his kids. And next thing you know, I'm in a battle to keep my parent rights. Well, that can okay. happen That can happen already. Through, you know, all, all, all some vindictive person has to do is call child services, mm -hmm. CPS or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's, I, I get you. And I, I, that crossed my mind as I was saying it out loud. There's, of course, going to be vindictive people who do stuff. But if you can well, I was use just that. wondering if there's any checks. Like, you know, uh, if, like if if I call in and tell you that I've got problems, then obviously you need to take that seriously. But if somebody else calls in, is there a check and balance type thing where, you know, I'm not guilty until proven innocent? Yeah, so I, I well, I imagine that they, you know, just cover their basis. They're going to send somebody out to have a conversation, and then that, that, that uh, social worker at that point would make a – decision am i right about this yeah you always have to be on the side of caution uh, making sure um you know if the call is made they you know even law enforcement has to respond regardless of of what happened and i do understand what you're saying some people may just be vindictive and want to just cause problems for you but we it's just to not be not taking a chance and it's no, 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 I, really I agree, happen. and you shouldn't take a chance especially if there's a kid involved yes sir. i'm i'm a hundred percent with you I just, you know, I'm so tired of everybody just throwing their hands up screaming victim when nothing happens to them. You know, it just, I'm, I guess I'm always on guard. So I love what you're doing. I think you're doing a great job. I was just wondering if y'all thought about the other. Yeah, but I, brother, I appreciate you, man. Have a blessed day. I will. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, look, and that's one of the, as with anything, though, right? That's one of those situations where you're going to have people that do stuff like that. And that's when you got to have trained law enforcement and trained uh, social workers. And right. mental, mental health workers, they can come out and say, all right, this is, there, there's nothing here, you know. And one of the things with law enforcement, we are doing the um, just mental health awareness training for them. Um, I will be 
of June. Look, my day's running together now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on the coast in June for, um, and I'll have all the chiefs with the Chiefs Association. So they're going to have little old Chris Dan for two hours. We're going to be talking about mental health awareness uh, with the Chiefs Association. And that's, this is the first time that they have actually just dove over into mental illness um, to, uh, to the point of we having a two-hour lecture workshop. I'll tell you what, let's take a break. And when we come back, let's actually talk about what you and Leading by Example do. And we've just kind of been running down rabbit holes here because I love having this conversation with you. But let's, like, let's promote what you do and tell people how they can get involved. Okay. All right, sure. you're listening to The Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. We are live here <coughs> in the 103.9 studios. And this segment is going to be brought to you by Lakeland Glass and Tent, where quality matters, right over there on Lakeland Drive and at their new campus on Flowood Drive. If so, if you need your home, car, or automobile, or boat for that matter, tented, go see Lakeland Glass and Tent. If you need a windshield in your vehicle, go see Lakeland Glass and Tent. If you need your vehicle wrapped with your logo or you just want to simply change the color of it without having to get it painted, Lakeland Glass and Tent. You can check them out online okay. for a free estimate. I'm actually getting a windshield from one of my clients over at Auto Armor, and I went online at LakelandGlassandTent.com, put the vehicle information in, and they got right back with me on a quote, just like sending in a lead on a vehicle. <laughs> you can, uh, you can, you don't have to call, you don't have to wait, you don't have to do the whole nine yards. You can do it all online at LakelandGlassandTent.com. All right, I'm joined in the studio by Miss Christiane Williams with Leading by Example, and uh, we got a question on the text line. While we were during the break, and somebody asked, she goes, I, I got a question for her. Are there any other resources I can obtain? Because I feel like Region 9 isn't doing good enough. I deal with depression on a daily. Well, you can call the Department of Mental Health, and they have an 800 number. You can go online to Department of Mental Health. There also is NAMI Mississippi, the National Alliance of Mississippi, um, National Alliance on Mental Illness, which is based in Mississippi, you can always go online and call them. They're on Facebook. Um, they have different resources, peer classes that you can actually go to for whatever diagnosis that you have. Uh, you're, say that again with NAMI. NAMI, N-A-M-I, is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. National it's, Alliance on Mental Illness. Yes. They have a Mississippi. It's a national grassroots uh, mental health organization, but we have an actual state office here in Mississippi. Excellent. Excellent. I, again, I, I think this is so important for people to reach out. And, you know, if you're listening this morning and you know somebody, you know, d don't be afraid to sit down and have a conversation. With, you know, if you got somebody in your family, as, as I do, that deals with mental illness and, you know. We all do. Don't let them think it's a stigma. It's okay to have a conversation about it. And it's amazing how much of that anxiety it'll lift off of them by you just you having a conversation with them about it and letting them know, hey, I'm not judging you. I get it. It's okay. Let's, right. But let's just get you the get you some help if that's what you want. And go with them. Yeah. Um, I tell everybody, don't, you know, when we tell them you're not alone, mean that. Um, when they have a doctor's appointment or, or counseling, um, whatever it may be, go with them. Even if you can't go in the room with them in the back, just to know that, hey, that person that care about me is sitting in this lobby with me have taken off work and put, you know, I'm that important that you will go with to me to this type of appointment, which is no more than a regular med medical appointment. That's how I look at a mental health appointment. You, you know, you take them to go everywhere else and sit in the lobby and wait. So go with them when it comes to mental health. That's a great point. Great point. Just show, be, be supportive. Absolutely. It goes yeah. a long way. So tell us, uh, are people that may have missed the last show, Explain to them what Leading by Example is and how you got into this and, and what exactly you guys do. Leading by Example, it is a mental health awareness workshop that I developed with different um, workshops um, regarding what is mental health, the shame of mental health, um, suicide prevention. I compiled all of those in with some numbers and decided um, how can I squeeze this into a four-hour block with like hourly um, sessions um, and and make it work. And so I came up with the idea from going to meetings about meetings, and I realized that people having the meetings didn't have any idea what is mental health, and they kept throwing it out. And I said, so let me just fit, put something together. So I did it um, last year. I pitched it to Region 9 Director Dr. Crockett and Executive Director uh, Wendy Bailey with Department of Mental Health and told them my idea. And they both was like, 
Let's go for it. We'll support you. So then I called the Disability Rights Association because I wanted people to know because you can't see a mental illness, it doesn't mean it's not a disability. And you can get yourself caught up, you know, if a person have a diagnosed disability and how you treat them, it could cause you some problems. So I put all those together and decided I'm going to do four sessions, kind of a guinea pig, (laughs) and um, invited people to come. And it was actually a success. Um, The Department of Mental Health endorsed it and the Disability Rights Association endorsed the training. And from there, I've just taken it all over this nation and all over the state um, to churches, um, community centers, um, associations. I did the sheriff association. I'll be doing the police association, um, actually doing a workshop with them. Um, the chiefs, not the police, the chiefs association next month, as I said earlier, down on the coast for two hours, uh, I will have them. And that's to help them with their staff. To help them with their staff. And addressing any in it or being able to point, you know, see where somebody may be hitting the wall there and, and know that, hey, maybe it's time to take a breath, take some you time, you know, address some issues or whatever the case may be. Absolutely. And also for them to go back and reevaluate what policies they have in place. Um, because you think about if the chiefs doesn't have any idea about mental health and write a policy and the officer is supposed to adhere to it, it can put that officer in a situation that may cause them their job. Or, you know, you, you don't know trying to follow policy and it's not conducive to what they're actually experiencing from a person. So that's important that they make sure the policy goes with chief really understanding, then bringing it back where they want to have their people trained in it. I think this is great. How did how did you end up linking up with Nick over at USA Pawn? Because I, I, it's for for local businesses and to and I, I'm gonna make a two part question here. I think that you need the involvement of the local business community to step up and help out with this kind of stuff. I think that's really cool of Nick over there and the USA Pawn family to jump in and play such a huge role in this. They and have. then and then you know for <clears throat> for churches and communities and other businesses to want to bring you in and discuss these things, especially people who deal with the public. If you're in a front facing job and you, you, you can get the employees of these businesses on board to start trying to notice and address things. I mean, with, within privacy laws and this, that, and the other, but I, I just think this is great. Well, with Nick, um, I actually met him at the 30 year reunion, not reunion, <laughs> uh, anniversary for USA pond, a friend of mine, Steve Pickett and Marlo Stewart, um, invited me and say, come on, we going to USA Pond. I was like, for lunch? What are we going over there for? And not knowing, um, Nick walked up and they say, hey, what do you do? So I just started talking to him and then I kind of briefly discussed this here and he said, well, we want to help you. And I was like, okay. So we ended up later on linking up after uh, a young lady died by suicide in the Jackson area. And I said, look, we got to do something. And he said, well, I was ready to call you. So we started connecting um, with the support, um, as you see, you can see, they can't see this shirt I have on, you know, with the logo leading by example. When I say they went all in, they went all in. On yesterday um, at Top Cop, he said, I got something for you. And I said, sure. Uh, it was the brochure that you have yeah. in your hand. Um, with, and this brochure is, uh, you know, I know it's me on there, but I think it's one of the best one I've seen. Um, actually have my information. Got um, You got your hair all Oh, fancy. That's a summer do. Um, it has the uh, signs to look for. Um, we tried to put, and then we put information on contact information resources that you can actually call um, to get the help that you need. We tried to make it as helpful and resourceful as we possibly can. You'll have to give me a few of these, and I'll get them out there in my, my area. Okay. All right, so you mentioned, and I'm, you brought this up when you said there was a, a, per, a lady who committed suicide in Jackson. Are we talking about the high school student that left and Yes, they died by suicide. Yes, I, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I want to hit on that, the, and not maybe not talk about her personally, but how we can train these teachers in these schools to see these things and, and and take it serious. And that's really where a program like this is going to excel, in my opinion. And I've reached out to the schools. Um, hopefully, um, they will call to do like in service training prior to the kids coming back. Um, the Department of Education. Um, and the Department of Mental Health, I know uh, Director Bailey is working with them tr- over the summer 
to try to get some mental health awareness training for our educators. I mean, I know we put a lot on our educators, but suicide rates for our teenagers are jumping off the chart. And I don't like to use the word jumping, but I they, get it. But yeah. um, it's the rates is going up. And like I say, one death by suicide is one too many. You know, coming out of and I, I've got a daughter. Well, we, I, my stepdaughter graduated last night, but my daughter graduated 2020, that class of 2020, you know, and they got put and well, all of them. I, let me not single that out. These kids coming out of COVID and all the anxiety and stress that COVID caused and depending on how their parents were about it, you know, how secluded they were. All that alone time, uh, having their a lot of them having their senior year taken away from them, mm-hmm. and I, the suicide rates amongst <clears> kids <throat> spiked through this, and then the PTSD type stuff. You know, depending on the area, there's so much these kids have to worry about today that we didn't have to worry about growing up. The 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 social the sh- media. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> the stress of social media and the living up to the fake life that you people think you're supposed to have. Um, that man, I, I was thinking last night when I was at that graduation, I'm so glad social media didn't exist <laughs> before I was six, three, 250 pounds. Cause I would have got my butt whooped every day in high school, running my mouth on the internet, then having to go to, then having to go to school the next day, I'd have stayed beat up, you know? So that's just got to create a lot of anxiety. More to the story. It is. They have a lot to deal with. That's why I always tell people, see, say, see something, say something. Um, I recently had an incident that happened with me personally where um, someone saw something and actually contacted me regarding a relative. And it resulted in me calling somebody because I wasn't there to get to them and say, hey, can you go do a welfare check on this individual? So, um, you know, a lot of times the kids, I think they're not listening, but I guess I pounded in there. Keep telling them, you know, if you see something, say something. But, you know, when it hits your own it's a whole different feeling of, okay, this about to happen to my family. What do I do? So I, I, I left out of the family member mode and went into the crisis mode, you know, somebody trained. But if you see some, say some, call social media, call the 800 number, just t- ask for help for that person. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take our last <coughs> break of the day here. We're going to come back, land the plane for the day, get you all of Ms. Christiane's contact information and all that fun stuff. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. We'll be back, y'all. All All right, welcome back into The Clay Edwards Show. As we get ready to land this plane for the day, we got another minute or so longer than I planned. So I just want to run over 10 things real quick. These are the 10 common warning signs to look out for. And this is a pamphlet that's available uh, from Miss Christiane here. It's like, number one, feeling sad for more than... Then two weeks. Number two, severe, out-of-control behavior. Number three, sudden, overwhelming fear for no reason. Number four, significant weight loss or gain. Number five, trying to harm oneself. Number six, increased use of drugs or alcohol. Number seven, drastic changes in mood or behavior. Number eight, difficulty concentrating or staying still. Number nine, worries or fears that get in the way of daily life. That's a huge one. And number 10, believing things that aren't real. If you see any of these things in yourself or someone close to you, reach out, have a conversation. Christiane, how can they get in touch? Um, They can get in touch with me. I am on Facebook by Leading by Example MS um, or Leading by Example MS at gmail.com. And my number is 769 708-4142, Two zero eight four one four two, but you can always call nine one one. Come July, you can dial nine eight eight. You can contact the Department of Mental Health or your regional mental health facility in your area um, and ask for help. They all have mobile crisis that could come out and help you. AMR going to be staff, you know, with mental health also. So we're trying to get dispatchers, everybody that's dealing with the public. If you call, you should be able to just pick the phone up and access it. Man, look, that's great stuff. And if you, if anybody's out there listening, or you get down the road and you remember this show and something comes up, reach out to me. I, I'll have this stuff handy. I can get you in touch with, with her. And uh, any, you know, if you want to have you, you come out to your business. They can. They I can do reach come out, out and do workshops, um, presentations on mental health awareness. Is to get, help facilitate and get the conversation started and provide resources um, while you're there. And we do interactive stuff. 
That's um, great. Icebreakers. We're gonna we're gonna learn something that day. And look, if you're anywhere, you're probably gonna see Miss Christiane out there. She <laughs> she is a she is a hob knobbing around all over town. Her and Mr. Nick Fulton. All right, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, if there's You're anything welcome. the Clay Edwards Show can do to help you out, we'll always be here for you. If you missed any of this show, it'll be available here shortly on all major podcasting platforms and music streaming services. Or just go check out ClayEdwardsShow.com. Coming up next, Jim Thorne, followed by Mike Madison, right here on 103.9 WYAB. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow at 7 a.m. as the Clay Edwards Show discusses all that is going on in and around the city of Jackson. This concludes our broadcast day. Right here on 103.9 WYAB.